Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for coming back. Y'all hit the like button. Okay. Do that for me. Do that. Shout out to everybody in the chat. You guys are waiting. You're waiting for, for this to start. I mean, I got my coffee. I hope you guys got your drinks. This is a nice coffee. Don't judge me. I still have the Christmas cups. I bought like a 20 pack and I refuse to get rid of them because they're usable. All right. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys so much, mods. Thank you. Thank you. I want you guys to help me welcome my guest by the name of Oh No Nora. Find her channel in the chat linked up there as well as in the description box. We're about to have a really good conversation. This is an opportunity for me to learn a little bit more, um, to help me process this a little bit more because I got some questions. And I know you guys got questions too. All right. Shout out to everybody. Everybody. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Shout out to everybody. Everybody in the chat, you guys, thank you. Go sub up to Oh No Nora, guys. You yes. hit your 10K, right? I you, hit 10,000. Oh, my God. What? You know what happens like, after 10? You know what happens? What you happens? Gotta start, you got to start really going to 20. Yes. Once you hit 10, you got to go to 20. <laughs> yes, Natalie. <laughs> Like life after Scientology was making a joke that like in Scientology, we used to have to play this thing called the birthday game that was mm -hmm. like March 13th to March 13th, L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. So she's like, my own personal birthday game is I got to hit 20,000 by uh, uh, L. Ron's birthday. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I don't know. About that. L. Ron's. So when is his birthday? March 13th. Wow. So okay. I'm at 11,000 now. So I mean, 9,000 more subs. Between now is like a month, a month. So, so okay, this is a stupid question, but you say his birthday is March 13th. So, yes. like for us that are, you know, I'm Catholic, right? We celebrate Jesus's birthday in December. Correct. So, would that be Christmas for Scientology in March? Oh, Christmas. Like, but it's so confusing because Scientologists can be <laughs> any religion. And mm -hmm. still be a Scientologist, right? That's right. So, so we do have, and, and they're not holidays because nobody gets time off. Like you're not not working, right? Okay. <laughs> so not working have, extra harder, basically. Yes. <laughs> so you have events, and you you have a lot of work leading up to that event, right? So you have to um, make all these insane quotas and all these other stuff. So your stats your, are straight up and vertical, just. Mm. Boom like this looking mm. stupid right all the production is just like falsified because it's just stupid we're all just like cheating at that point wow. um but so that when they go to the events little david miscavige can get up there in his pretend navy space navy outfit and be like this is how many people have gotten a copy of dianetics and this is how many like they're going to talk about how many people saw the super bowl ad like they're just well, going to come okay. up with numbers all right the that. super bowl they said in the Super Bowl. Now, I felt like there was some inclusivity in the Super Bowl ad. They said, you right. can be all walks of life. You can be Jewish. You could be all kinds, you know, right. all, all kinds of right. everything. I was like, oh, does mm -hmm. that mean that I can be Catholic and be a Scientologist as well? Like, yes. as crazy as, well, there you go. As long as you don't want to go to too many masses. Like oh, it's damn. it's like if you want Christmas, if you want to be like a Christmas Easter Catholic, fine. Listen, fine. I don't even go to the ones that I'm supposed to go <laughs> now. So <laughs> I'm already but in yeah. trouble. I don't even go to the ones yeah. that I'm supposed to go now. Like, I swear, right. I walk in and they give me the dirtiest look and I'm like, <laughs> and that's why I don't come to this. <laughs> All right. I'm here to see Jesus. Forget you people. That's what I'm here Listen, to do. Listen, I did 10 Hail Marys in the parking lot already. That's right. Back off. That's Back it. Off. Yeah. Forgiven. <laughs> like, it's religion gets so sticky, I think, just in mm -hmm. general. We were on a tram ride from uh, Beaverton into Portland to go see the um, Portland Winterhawks. It's a minor league hockey team here. And these teens with like a Bible that was as big as this girl's torso started like evangelizing on the train. And oh, they were specifically Lord. doing it to another teen, like trying to recruit her in this mm -hmm. like love bombing. And you have been lost. And I was just like, I was not having it. It was Saturday. I just wanted to go to the hockey game. So I just started responding. She was like, 
will you pray with me? And I was like, no. And I was like all the way at the other end of the train. And she was like, ask some other question. I was like, no, thank you. And then because she was using like the preacher voice, yes. I was like, I will not follow you into the light. Like I just, I was like, I could out preach you in this moment, honey. Like, you know, and then she was, and then this kid, one of the other, it was like a group of them. One kid like went up to a passenger and like touched them. It was like, I have seen um, tumors fly out of someone's legs while because of prayer and i was like that's called science it's not prayer like i was just like sir don't and, and i was like not i was like you have to ask for consent it's 2024 and he was like when did we start counting years i was like before jesus like don't don't start don't start don't start like even the Catholic Church knows that. Like go to go to the Vatican, honey, and study something. Like Yes, yeah, seriously. Like, like and I am probably the worst out of there because I question it all. Even you know, and I it, the, the best part about being able to question it all is that I know that if we are all praising the same God, we're gonna be forgiven, right? Because that's sure what this is all about and well, less... apparently he already forgave any, everybody anyway so i don't know why we're making a big deal out of it right like that's what he put himself on the cross for apparently it's already I'm died a... for everybody's sins so what's the point why are we yelling <laughs> what's why is everybody so mad especially on the train why the hell are you yelling? i know but it's just like we're just trying to go to the hockey like mm. stop <laughs> no honey mm. i was like i escaped a cult my channel's oh no nora check it out <laughs> And my kids oh my are God. like trying to like just get down in the chairs, like to not be with me at all. And they videoed themselves reacting to me. Oh, I Lord. Like, I was like, oh, I have to see this video. Oh, was, my God. They were like, you were so cringe, mom. So cringe. Cringe. Oh, my God. So cringe. Cringe <laughs> AF. Fur fur. Lamau. <laughs> all right. All right, let's get it together. We're supposed to be serious right now, girl. Okay. It's serious. Listen, let's get serious. It's serious. Here we go. Serious face. Yes. Bring now that I've blessed everyone here in the Guys, uh, comment welcome section. Welcome, Nora. <laughs> Everybody's dropping hot dogs on the chat, by the way. Yes, welcome to yes. the hot dog crew. Shout yes. out to the hot dog crew. <laughs> okay. So, First of all, let me start by saying I want to thank you for your breakdown. I had, mm. I was, guys, I was telling Nora um, behind the scenes that I had to watch her review of the blog three or four or five different times to truly understand a little bit of what you were saying. Um, as a never in, it was helpful and insightful to hear you break it down and also you sharing some experiences. And then this whole, verbiage of dead agent you know i just said that is like the perfect merch shirt for a never in oh my god i gotta get that with a bullseye <laughs> right in front of the effing forehead right here right because it just felt like that you know, it just felt so psychological but but, it's very violent i mean there's nothing not violent about it the there is nothing not violent. somebody but yeah it's, let me just say this okay Going back a little bit, people had been leaving comments and have been leaving comments. And you even addressed this very much earlier on in your video, which we'll watch a little bit about. You know, you said something about the fact that people are, especially in the never ends, are so caught up with this whole idea of you're not supposed to offend people or you're not supposed to say something. Like, let me read you this person's lengthy comment. They said, "Okay, in regards to Miriam. Right. Why is she bringing this up now? I'm not intentionally trying to be disrespectful or diminish, ignore the horrors that she went through. However, with everything going on in the past few months with Aaron and the aftermath, mm, uh, foundation, et cetera, it's really causing me to question why people are coming out against each other. And I didn't answer, but then I was mm. like, I did. And I said, well, what time frames? <laughs> I didn't answer for like three hours. And then I did. Okay. You know, yeah. you got to play kind of, you know, you got to think about what you're going to say. Right? right. Right. And every time I get questions, Nora, about why people speak out at certain time frames of their life, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. really makes me wonder, and I've questioned it before, whether it's somebody coming out, alleging whatever they're alleging, Right why not why not now right 
what right. would be, and this was my question to this person, what time frame should she have spoken out when? Like, like if you had a specific time frame as the person that's asking that question, mm -hmm. what time frame do you feel like she should have spoken out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's well, it's not sufficient, right? Well, first of all, she did speak out when it happened. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, the church policy went into effect, which is uh, rather grotesque. Like two things happen when any sort of criminal activity, mm -hmm. whether it's SA or big R or any of these things happen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that occurs, okay, is that the assailant and the victim are, are separated. They're put yes. under what's called separation order. Right. Mm -hmm. So that they cannot talk to each other. They cannot collaborate. They cannot um, in any way communicate with each other. Right. Right. So that even if they were like uh, it, it was you, whatever, there's just no communication. S step two, once that separation and this like, you know, uh, iron wall is between them, they both then get put into an intensive uh, security checking Right. Um, like thing, like just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours a day of confessionals for both the assailant and the victim. OK, you have to understand this. It's not just the assailant. It's also the victim, because mm -hmm. in Scientology, the only reason a crime happens to you is because you are guilty of crimes yourself. You brought it on to yourself. You you pulled this. You literally pulled the crime to you. It's called pulling it in. You you gathered that crime and you made it happen because yes. of some other crimes that you've been withholding from the group. Okay. So now, so if if Nora, who was such a young child, mm -hmm. right? But then again, there are no children. There is no child development. Shout out to Serge in the chat. There is no child development in right. Scientology. So right. somehow this young body being brought mm -hmm. this on to herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once that intensive uh, security checking is done and they both the assailant and the victim have mm -hmm. thoroughly confessed and both then believe that they are criminal and they need to reform and they need to make amends to the group in yes. order to rejoin it. Then the assailant and the victim are moved out of the jurisdiction of the crime that occurred. Now, if the crime is really, really bad, they will be moved immediately. Right. Okay? Like, okay. And that could right be away. far, that could be to another country, like in the case of Miriam, where she was moved from Australia to England. Let's mm -hmm. follow along with that story. Literally human trafficked from her home country of birth to a foreign country to prevent so, like jurisdictional, uh, you know, investigation, intervention, intervention, invest yes. police, anything. Right. Okay. And then once all that programming happens and that's, that's covered it. in the movie, the confessional, which originally starred Jason Begay, I'm sure they've redone it or just burnt the whole film. Um, where he was a space captain in the in the film, yeah, and and he had gotten mm -hmm. uh, um, cast overboard by his crew and like, uh, you know, uh, left on this planet, and some other guy picks him up and he can't understand why, like, oh, this good guy and like, brr, 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 brr. and he goes through, and so the guy starts auditing him and he starts giving off these what you call in Scientology like paperclip overts, um, just like that little tiny things that don't mean anything. Then he finally confesses that the reason why they threw this guy overboard is yes. that he essayed his first mate who is a woman. And then he's okay. all happy and joyous after confessing this crime. His needle floats. The guy auditing him is like, Oh, good for you. You're all, you're all fixed up. And then the last line of this movie isn't like I should make it up to this lady. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably never wear. I should apologize. It is. I should get her some auditing too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Get, yeah. So this person, this person that left. Confessional TRs. Thank you, Serge. Yeah. Confessional. Okay. I'm going to have to watch. This person right here basically asking, and I don't think they're necessarily asking why it wasn't 
reported. They're mm -hmm. asking when she says, uh, and I asked her, like, what time frame did you want right. her to have spoken out? She says, during the filming of the very episode you're showing clips of. So in reference, mm. she's basically saying she wanted Miriam to confront Mike Rinder at that in, very in moment. In that moment. In, in that, that moment. moment. Well, let's let's hold let's, up. Yeah, hold go up. for it. Let me let me finish because it's pretty late. She says, during the filming of that very episode you're showing clips of, she should have confronted Mike Rinder then and there. This mm -hmm. is obviously very traumatic uh, part of her life she's still going through and then it said read more but i didn't want to read more i just left it at that <laughs> fuck it i mean I, I i can raise my hand as a woman mm -hmm. who has been essayed um i i don't know how many women in the chat would also be raising their hand the statistic is one in four women mm -hmm. um in america have experienced that um when that has happened to you and you are being confronted with reliving that moment, mm -hmm. not only um, having to like relive it yourself, but now you're doing it in front of cameras that have strangers behind them. Right. In a bright room that is not yours. You are not in a safe space. You are not um, surrounded by your loved ones. You have right. no support group. You have a man sitting in front of you who quite possibly orchestrated this. And she received shocking information during that episode, which she wasn't expecting when Mike made the offhand comment. Oh, you know, <laughs> the one that got her mom to America in that moment, the wheels had started to turn for her. Yes. That he's the reason why she was left alone with her father. He's also the reason why she's in America making this show. And you have to weigh it out in that moment. You have to weigh it out. I'm going to say this story. I'm going to make an impact. I'm told this is going to be groundbreaking. It's going to help so many people. Yeah. It's going to shatter Scientology. Or I can reach across this table and be like, are you fucking kidding me right now? And Absolutely. like go for the throat. It, it, Miriam, if you watch her content and you listen to her, I find her to be so intelligent and so patient and so kind. And also I can't imagine being in that moment and, and, and knowing that in that moment, and having to make the decision to keep talking. And I just want to acknowledge everyone who wrote, who raised their hand in the chat here. Like, uh, thank you for, for sharing that in the chat with us. Um, and, and this is why it's so important because it's just, you know, Miriam's not alone. Yeah. You know, and, and thankfully Mike Rinder never had to experience that for himself. Um, there are many CERG members who experienced that yeah, in, in varying degrees. And it was handled the same way every time. Uh, sometimes the victim was put onto the RPF, the rehabilitation project force, because, you know, they were a slut. They seduced the person, all these other things, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if the other person was married and they had a higher post and all these other things. So, uh, when it comes to victims of SA and how much, you know, there's so many factors. I mean, you do counseling. Absolutely. So it's like, it, it's how much therapy the person's had, how much, you know, time has passed. And it's, it's all a personal thing. Um, it, it's such an ignorant question to ask. It really um, is. It really is. Coupled so that's with why. Scientology, you should never talk about it because it means but, you're a criminal. So it's like it not only is it like regular SA stuff where like women just shut down or even yeah. men who are, who are SA shut down uh or non-binary people or just all people's but I'm just using the binary here guys. Um you know, people shut down after an essay for like a million reasons, okay? Yes. And then you put on top of that like all of the counseling and the rules and the cult ethos that are slammed into you from childhood about why you don't talk about, you know, Bruno. And it's like, 
it, the fact that she opened her mouth and said anything, this is like a miracle, you know? Um, and that is the theme of various comments that yeah. I have gotten that it's like, why, um, why now she should have confronted him when she was on that episode. And I said, well, the hell like do i do i know the circumstances to which but then it goes into all kinds of other blaming and i've seen that especially on the render fan base because the oh, man does have a huge fan base i didn't realize how big it was until i got some of the threatening emails yeah. and threatening oh, yeah. messages and i was like you have got to be kidding me well y'all are crazy yeah i mean the thing the it's thing a, here's the thing is that you know, and I've been, I've been yelled at a lot and yeah. that's fine. Here, here's, here's what I want to say. Do I think that Mike Rinder has done nothing good since he left the Sea Org? No. Do I think that some people have been helped by his words and by some of his actions um, since he's left the Sea Organization and there have been individual humans that he has helped? Absolutely. I'm not going to debate that with him. Okay. Um, in the same vein, uh, that goes also for Claire. Okay. And, yeah. and her husband, Mark. However, what I pointed out yesterday, or however many days ago my video dropped, I don't know time anymore, um, is that my personal belief, okay, in my personal opinion, from the moment that he left, right, his story, and it's in his book, it's on his blog. His story has been the same since he left and he's sticking to it that he, he left at a moment's notice one day. And this is really is how it goes. It's not a weird story to just one day, just be like, I've had enough deuces and just like leave. Right. Yeah. So that day yeah. came for him and he, he just took off with what he had. And part of what he had was this magical thumb drive that just happened to contain a certain set of files. And the playbook uh, for the, you know, OSA, and also somehow access to SIR, which is the, um, like, the directory for all the policies and stuff like he yes. had. Just, so, for my own personal opinion, okay, because I was brought up by a, a person who was in the Guardian's office, made me highly suspicious of everything, and my dad was a private investigator. Like, I look at things with different windows to the world, okay? Yes. Knowing the OSA policies and seeing the actions as they unfolded from over here, because like Mike said, I wasn't invited to all these parties, right? So I can view it from an external viewpoint here. Yeah. The story doesn't totally add up, right? The story, it, it's the same thing with Mark and Claire. They came out, they were doing their successful business, they're having kids, everything's going on, and they do this lawsuit. They didn't really have good representation. It kind of fell apart, but they got made whole. They they even talked about it. They bragged about it. They ran a fundraiser. People paid them back for all the money they lost. Everything was fine for them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and Mark still had a successful business. Claire had a job. It wasn't like they were destitute. They were doing fine. I mean, they weren't like super rich or anything, but, you know, they were living a good life outside of this. I mean, everything's a good life outside of the York. Let's be honest. Absolutely. Um, but, um, you know, and Mike it struggled at first. He did get a job with Aaron and then he, you know, started doing his blog and that started giving him some notoriety. He wrote his, you know, then he mm -hmm. got the, uh, the show with Leah. Um, and then because of that, he got a book deal and, you know, he gained some fame, right? So he, it, 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 there's a group sometimes and I'm getting like lost a little bit, but sometimes when you're in the Sea Org for such a long time, you, the only thing you can climb to, right, is these, these ranks, the gold on your shoulders, those ribbons and things like that. Those mean things to us in the Sea Org. Uh, it is completely stolen valor. It is complete hogwash. It is embarrassing um, and I've apologized to military people every time. If you are a military person in the chat, I apologize to you uh, for the stolen valor. Um, but like, 
those were the things we were striving for to get those ranks, to be someone who somebody else had to call sir. Okay. To be in charge, to have that, you know, power. Right. And so Mike had a lot of power. He had a lot of power. Claire had tremendous power. She was at the top. Why isn't that? Why? Like in this book that he wrote and I Mm -hmm. read the book and I said, this is such a, um, and this is his experience. Please note that I'm not shitting on the man's experience. Right. That's not what this is about. But it is not if if the way in which various other like yourself and other folks that did experience working alongside or at least had parents there or were none of this is making sense for somebody that is a never in that's reading his version versus mm-hmm. what you guys as a community is saying. Right. Right. That is the biggest disconnection as a never in. And to me, mm-hmm. the, I say this because that's it's a bit of a a brain learning journey for me that I'm like, wait a minute, this is such a cookie cutter version of what everybody over here is saying. Mm-hmm. Does that mm-hmm. really make sense? Like, which one is it? Well, it's see, just, this is this yeah. is where his LRH, L. Ron Hubbard, PPRO, personal public relations officer job comes in because he never stopped like when he first came out, he was still very much into Scientology. And he was mm-hmm. talking about Scientology and just explaining it away in the same way he had been inside the church, but sort of like took very baby steps to just be like, well, maybe this is kind of incorrect, like in the real world, like Mm. maybe we don't like this, but he would just like explain the policies, right? Like in in the same way that he'd been doing for press and the same way that he'd been doing in documentaries and, but just less like kind of dickish. Um, (laughs) And like, I mean, like go watch the documentaries. It's kind of a dick. Right. Because he's yes. he's, you know, he's tone 40. He's 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 annihilating these reporters. I mean, like, be, let's be honest. He's apologized to John to Sweeney, the reporters. Who, by the way, to by the way, he was a complete psychopath too. before he's apologized to me before he's apologized to the other peons that he worked with. Like people like Claire, like Mike Rinder struck fear, like literal, like we would cower if we knew they were coming to our organization it wasn't mm-hmm. like oh yeah Mike's here. <laughs> yes. like no we'd be like oh fuck like we knew some shit was going down if if claire or one of the other rtc reps just like you know materialized new york you were fucked you were like that's it some shit was going down somebody was going to the rpf you were in trouble there was no good news when it, especially marty rathman's wife who we referred to as mr and mrs rathman that that woman was like cruella de vil meets what's that harry potter lady that was super duper cuckoo kachu that was played oh, by Lord. helena bonham carter that those two had a baby and it was her yeah i can't remember her character's name but yeah okay. um yeah, it was. She was like, whew, and she's still there. It's her and two other ladies that are like supposedly watching Shelly Miscavige, and that's that's a whole other topic for another time. The whole Shelly Miscavige debacle. Leah's looking for her friend, and in all honesty, I wish that Shelly would just write to Leah and be like, Leah, honey, I don't need you to look for me. Thank you, appreciado. Um, I'm on post and I'm good because Shelly is a dedicated unbelievably dedicated Sea Org member. She ain't never leaving. She ain't never leaving. She is like waiting for the second coming of Hubbard. Okay. She's, she's not leaving. Now everyone's like, Oh, that was a fake thing. It was a distraction. Not for Leah. She really wants to know where the fuck this woman was because it was not okay that they just told her you can't ask that question. And that was like, I can't what, excuse me. Uh, Yeah. I will ask whatever question I want. And so genuinely, like they literally could have avoided a television show, a book, and 90% of this mess if they had just been like, oh, yeah, let's get Shelly on the phone for you. Hey, Leah, yeah, here's Shelly. Hi, hi, sweetie. Oh, yeah, I'm good. I just got reposted in a confidential place. You know, I can't tell you where it's at. You know, I'm just doing LRH stuff. All right, honey. Kisses. Bye. Like that would have been it. Like I'll, I'll, I'll get the Christmas card forwarded. Like it would have been a nothing burger. But instead, they 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 like got they picked the wrong one. You don't. 
that was just stupid. That was, and they, it's not like they didn't know who they were talking to. They didn't, yeah. they knew who they were talking to, you know, so do it's you, just stupid. I hear you. And do you feel like, and I, the, so I definitely recommend if you guys have not watched it, go sub up again to, oh no, Nora, but there's a specific area here where you talked, you call out a lot of the stuff that mm -hmm. a lot of us were saying. I know a, a. Ron called it out. Like you're mentioning mm -hmm. Leah, you're, you know, what is it about that? And so for me, and I said it, it's so hard for me not to take offense when this man is clearly, you know, talking down at us mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then puts Leah in the mix of it. So is like my brain is like, well, is Leah co-signing this shit? I don't know the lady. I can't but speak you would for have to Leah. Think that. Uh, and okay. I never, ever speak for Leah. Okay. Because she is a powerful woman. Right. Okay. But like I did, like I did my video, I brought my book out and I was like, Mama Leah, Mama Leah. Now, part of the ex community, what ends up happening is, you know, people try and pick a de facto leader. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. And this happens every 10 years or so, right? Like, if you rewind the clock, the leaders way back in the day were like Jesse Prince, Hannah, and <clears throat> Spanky. These were like okay. the three. May, and, and you have Tori too. I would, I would put those, those four people and they were out there before it was popular, before it was the thing talking, telling, you know, they worked with Elrond. They worked with Mary Sue. Hannah was on the ship with Elrond Hubbard. Like she knows the things she was telling all of the stuff in the eighties and the nineties. And people were like, mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm, you know, and it, they were ignored. Right. There was no YouTube back then. No, there, there was, was no YouTube. <laughs> and, and, there, and some people did interviews with them in the early days of YouTube and it's been buried. Um, they're still out there. They're still out there. And then um, Tori, you know, she's not protesting as much now. She's kind of retired because, you know, she's living her life and just hanging out with her grandkids and doing whatever. And same thing with Spanky and all that. Other stuff. And I respect that. Like, listen, when you hit your 70s, like, go do you, you know, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Like, go be a Nana. <laughs> Like we're, we're a bit younger. We could take the helm and, and, and do all this stuff. Um, you know, I don't think you should be, you know, uh, having to do this until you die kind of a situation. Right. Um, and then once YouTube hit the, the first big blow was of course, Jason Begay's just interviews where he just like barfed all the stuff that ever happened and how terrible it was and all the lies and all the stuff. And people mm -hmm. couldn't believe it. Like it was just this huge thing and he was protesting all over the place. He went to Germany and all these different places. Um, and then he just stopped talking because he was like, well, now I got to go back to acting because I need to make some money. I can't just sit here Absolutely. on YouTube, talk about Scientology all the time. And now he's, you know, on one of the biggest shows on television. I'm just a big gay, you know, like, so he's doing that. Um, you know, um, other people have never said anything since they left like Jason Lee zero, you know, other people have just quietly left. They've said nothing other than, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. So I'm a jam. Um, and, and that's their prerogative. Um, you know, it makes it a little frustrating, a little bit hard personally, you know? And so Leah got kicked out in an explosive manner and yeah. she was like, mm. You know, and she's deal. She dealt with it in the way that she felt best. She also, if you read her book, felt a tremendous amount of guilt and responsibility for having recruited a lot of people into Scientology by being one of the celebrity spokespeople. Okay. Right. And so that was like how all this momentum got started. And so the tie-in between her and Mike, right, um, is that because Mike is so skilled at mm -hmm. the dead agenting and the crafting, the narrative and all of this PPRO stuff, right? He's a master at PR, an absolute master. You could put him in a room with Vladimir Putin and he'd probably charm the pants off of that guy in about 10 minutes because he could get in there and just tell him all the things he needs to hear. And they'd be besties in about 20 minutes, just foof, because that's his main skill set. It doesn't make him a terrible person. It's just the thing that he was, you know, drilled to do really well. Scientology creates tremendous liars, tremendous con people, tremendous salespeople, and tremendous PR 
people because we're all just trained on that. So, so let me back it up a little bit. Yeah. For those that don't know in the chat, can you explain to in the simplest way what a debt agent is? Um, yes. Let me know. Let us know. Yes. So, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. where did I put that? Because I had it up. I had to read it. So, a debt agent, um, in the simplest terms, is when you have information mm -hmm. about a person and they are attacking you. Okay. And it's basically performing a group magic trick. Okay. So, you want to erase whatever is the factual data that someone wants to think about this person or subject, and you want to put in all of your data on top of that, okay, so that only your data is the one that is trusted. So you go category by category, thing by thing, and explain away um, why Whatever the statement, the person, their belief, whatever, is completely the opposite with your evidence. Now, in, in, in layman's terms, which I got introduced to in my chat, which I didn't know I had to look up, I guess it's like DARVO, right? Yes. Which is, which is the big word now. I had to look that up. I did not know mm -hmm. what DARVO was. But basically, you're, you're doing that, right, on a grand scale. Now, these things can be done in, in campaigns inside the church. Um, they, um, they make packs, dead agent packs about specific subjects, about people, about organizations. So that mm -hmm. it, like, let's say you bring up, if somebody were to bring up me, right. As an example, and they were like, oh, well I watched, you know, Ono Nora's channel. They probably have like an entire pack that they just sit down in front of somebody and they just like flip through all of the crimes I ever committed in the church to just have them get totally grossed out about all Nora falsified her stats one week. And she so just it's, did this like, it's Nora, just a whole it's no thing. different. It's no different than mm -hmm. the websites that like right. are up there on Leah, on Mike, right. on Aaron. Mm -hmm. So when I was, when I was listening to you, you <laughs> basically broke it down and was like, this is what you call debt agent, agenting. Mm -hmm. Have we been debt agent, debt agented? I guess that's how I would, yeah. Debt agent. Well, <laughs> in, in essence, yes. I mean, that blog post, you know, if you bring it up, the yeah, blog post that up. Mike wrote, uh, you know, his novella. No. Um, <laughs> it, it, Hold up, was why exactly can I bring it up? Yeah. Well, that that's the that's the thing is is that like it, it's always lengthy. It's never like you know like one sentence, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is uh it, it is quite lengthy, and you know it also includes a lot of um you know completely false information, right? Um, you know, in, in, in like half truths and partial truths, and um you know all this other stuff. Um, where it just like, it doesn't, um, it doesn't add up, right? It, it doesn't. just doesn't, no, it doesn't add up at all. It's just like, even when he's trying to apologize, he just doesn't like, like I pointed out in my life, it's like, he should have just said, I'm sorry. You know, I fucked up. I said these words, they were wrong words. And that's yes. it. That's the end of the apology. But then he went on for like four more paragraphs. Right. What is he? Because even when he says these truth tellers have used and manipulated good people, supporters of our fight, uh, who want to help end the criminal behavior of Scientology. So I'm assuming that he That's is you. That would be me. I'm the truth teller that is manipulated. Everybody, y'all have been manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> I have. This is now the cult. This is what it is. But see, this is, here's, here's also the problem with this too, just shows his ignorance on how the internets work. Right. Uh, yeah. This is, this is a sad truth on, he's still in the Scientology frame of mind, right? Like right. Scientology doesn't know how the internets work. Um, they don't know how 20, you know, like they're not in the 20th century. They're still using telexes. They're still using, you know, um, low end phones because they don't want their 
you know, their people to be on the internet because they mm -hmm. would find out. I mean, like if you, if you ever saw Ronnie Miscavige senior, he says he found out the truth about Scientology because someone bought him a nook so that he could read books and I then remember. he got on the internet on mm -hmm. the nook. And that's when he started reading all the stuff on, um, you know, Scientology and was like, oh shit, I got to get out of here. So they don't want anybody to have smartphones. They don't want uh, all this access to anything. Like COVID was the greatest thing that ever happened to them. They're still right. doing COVID protocols right now with like people having to like step on these weird mats and like the germs and they're convincing the parishioners that like, you know, it's still not safe out there and like all this other stuff because they don't allow them to watch the news or read the papers if they tell them COVID isn't over and you have to like keep wearing gloves to touch everything and do all this stuff and supply all this stuff, then their parishioners fully believe it. Like they so will just keep doing that. Someone like, okay. And, and let me just say how, at least in my opinion, even though we do have those Mike Rinder fans, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is what it is, but I don't think I, I don't know. I don't think this shit worked for him. I don't think the blog worked for him. Here and I was sitting, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, Linda, it didn't work. Look, let me tell you why. <laughs> I'm a never in, right? So, like the psychological warfare doesn't right. work for me right here, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't know. It just I, I don't know. Like it just doesn't Be because you're a never in right like so you look at mike rinder as just this guy he mm -hmm. left he was head of some organization like mm, and and he was teamed up with mama leah and this mm -hmm. is the important part because she is a recognizable international star beloved great actress funny television show international all the things she gives him what we call in scientology ethics protection Oh, right. Okay. okay. Wow. So, so because they're attached, right? Everyone thinks of Mike and Leah. They don't just think of Mike. When they think of Mike, they think of Leah. Leah. So That's if nice. you're hurting Mike, uh-oh, you're hurting Leah. So yeah. people don't want to say, I... right. Because he does that in his blog. Leah and I did this. And Leah and I did that. And <laughs> Leah, me and Lily. And Lily and me. And it's like... Okay, so I, I made a promise when Lee and I, you know, became friends. I told her, I was like, listen, I'm not going to be the person that's going to call you up and be like, oh, Leah, so and so, is, like, and they're mean to me today. <laughs> like, Leah's not my mom. Okay, we're like basically the same age, okay? Like, she's not my mom. We both have kids. Like, I, we have a life. We talk about mm -hmm. our kids and we, we share about that. But it's like, I don't expect her to solve my problems for me. That's not her job. She has, she has like 25 jobs, you know, like right, she's, right. she's doing a ton of things. Plus she also has a court case that she's trying to win. This is very important. Okay. But there's no way, shape or form and it, it, check the records. I, I don't march around going, well, I'm friends with Liam Remini. So you can't talk to me like that. Like why? But every time that Mike gets pushed up against a wall about something, it's like, like no no leah is not your personal like attack you know jewish italian brooklynite like she's not there to like do stuff for you that's not her job your job is was to be a decent human being and be what you told her you were gonna be right which is like your her your her sidekick, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's don't get it twisted. You're the sidekick. You sit in the back seat, okay? And this is the problem. It's like people leave the C organization, um, and they still think they have that rank. They still think they have this importance. First of all, nobody knows anything about what you fucking did in the C organization or who you were or who you sat next to at lunch. This is specifically for Mitch Brisker or anything else. Oh, what? Wait, 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 what? Sorry. 
I had to call him out because he's on the like, I, everyone should not be saying bad things about Mike Rinder right now. And he's like on every Facebook group, just yelling at everybody about it, saying we're all trolls and all this other stuff. Like, Mitch, you can oh, come I on over know. to my channel and say that to my face, honey. But the other thing is, is like, <laughs> no, Mitch, wait, 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 because wait, wait, you Nora. had lunch with David Miscavige. Okay, Hold on up. the daily mm. doesn't make you better than me or Serge or anybody else. Okay, you know me? that 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 seems to be a divide, right? And, and I don't he, have anything against Mr. Briss. I don't know him no, very well. He made, I know he, he made Scientology films, and I'm not okay. I'm, listen, we're not going to get into the quality of the films or not or whatever. That's another topic for another time. But the problem <laughs> is, the problem is, it Hold doesn't up. make him more important or better. It's the same thing that somebody who escaped from gold doesn't make them better than me for escaping from Celebrity Center. And I'm not better for escaping from Celebrity Center than somebody who escaped from FLAG or somebody who escaped from, you know, where Aaron worked at the Advanced Organization Sea Hill. When we were in the Sea Org, did I look at that person and be like, ugh, ew, absolutely, yes, 100%. <laughs> but we're all we're all escapees. We have all left the cult. Yeah. We are all in the real world. We're all healing right now. We're all humans who are healing from a cult. That's all we are. We're not okay. anything else. And that's what we all have to realize. There's no more ranks and ratings. We're not we're not about that life anymore. If you want to start your own new cult where you can do that go go for it but this if this is the real world nobody cares nobody cares okay so let me like, let me just care? say this do you no, care I, about I don't know what, what lunch table <laughs> no. does anybody in the chat listen like, honestly listen. does anybody in the chat care who sat at david miscavige's lunch table nora hold does on anybody hold on. no let no. me just say this nobody hold up cares. first of all i don't uh, all right. I don't have an issue with Mr. Mitch. I'm I'm in the process. That I get by his book. For me. That's I'm You're not speaking, trying to drag okay. you into that rabbit. That being said, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let me drink some coffee. Look, let yeah, me just get say your, this. Get your holiday coffee. Let me... <laughs> These were on sale. I refuse Listen, to give up the cups. I'm with you. I buy anything. Listen, you know how much my whole house is IKEA. I could be an IKEA catalog. Okay. okay? It's all good. So Get everything so, on sale. So here's my thought, though, and I, and this yeah. is just it's an outsider observing, right? Um, there seems to be a divide, and I people have apologized for this for using the age piece, and be, because mm -hmm. there is a divide mm -hmm. in terms of like generations, right? Oh, sure. How this generation is and versus how the other generation mm -hmm. is handling mm -hmm. things. One thing I notice as an outsider, I'm noticing that the older generation is feeling like certain things you don't address anymore. Mm -hmm. And I can mm -hmm. relate to that given that, you know, my parents are kind of like that, right? They're, they're much older and they are very much like, you don't address the mental health. You don't address oh, things. No. You, you just don't. And you, you, yeah. you lock it all in and you, especially right. being um, first generation, right? My parents, mm -hmm. you know, both being immigrants and stuff like that. It was, right. He, it was something that I sunk in a lot. And so one thing that I noticed just by observation is there's different generations of ex-scientologists, survivors of this cult. Right. And everybody either deals with it through therapy and addresses the issue or they don't. Or some people do and they're way advanced out of that. And they find other outlets like protesting. They find other things that they feel like this is going to help heal and also bring awareness whereas i see some folks that are just kind of like i'm sitting this one out that's ridiculous i don't deal with that i was up over here while y'all were over here just like the cafeteria analogy that you gave oh yeah i you know what i'm saying i don't i don't care who the hell i, I don't even think i went to the cafeteria because i was like fuck school i'm out of here you know what i'm saying like that's how i <laughs> but the main difference is this it is generational 100 percent. yes but yes. it is also whether or not that person has gotten therapy. Exactly. I will, and, and, and anybody can see the difference in me from my online postings way back in the early 2000s and even some videos I did early on to me now. Um, 
And I just got an email from somebody today talking about that very thing, which made me very emotional. Um, and in a lot of the stuff I posted early on was prior to me going yeah. to therapy. And I was just very angry. I was very visceral. Um, I felt very correct about everything. Um, I still had a very much an inability to say, I don't know, and I'm wrong. Like, yeah. that is very hardcore programmed into you. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and there were different eras of Scientology as well, which a lot of people don't acknowledge and they like to just throw that away as a concept. But it really is true that like, when my mom got into Scientology in the seventies, it was on the cusp of the sixties, free love, all this, you know, hippy dippy stuff. Um, and a lot of cults, it was like, you know, throw a dart, you're going to hit a cult in the hate Ashbury where my mom was. And yeah. she got into Scientology and it was like a party. Everybody was partying mm -hmm. and it was about helping mankind and they were having a good time. And there was a lot of sex and it was just sort of like, woo. And the, like they didn't have the very hardcore um, like rules about marriage and like kind of stuff like that. Even Hannah talks about that in the early days of the ship. They didn't yeah, have that. Yeah. They were just kind of like, hey, we're swinging. We're doing this. It's, you know, they were still in that very much experimental um, thing. And then it started blowing stuff up. Now, my mom was also involved in the Guardian's office and, you know, involved in a lot of, you know, uh, things there. So it was like two sides of a weird coin. Like it was like, we're helping all of mankind. It's a party, but we're also spying on our members to keep them from like, you know, not doing stupid shit. Like, whew, you know, and, and she left after I was born, uh, like doing stuff. She wasn't working for the guardian's office after that. Um, you know, and then when she came back into Scientology, like doing it full time, by the time I was like 12, um, it had reached like a different era in the eighties. Mm. It was much stricter. Okay. Um, the books had been re-released for the first time. They had been edited, you know, reprinted. It was this rebuffing kind of shining up of the penny, if, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right. And then by the time I came into the C organization, um, in the nineties, it had gotten even stricter. It was okay. like snap and pop, 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 pop. And then I was part of the original was called like golden age of tech where they completely revamped the tech. It was like, we found all these people who had just messed up policy and like check and we threw that away. Like what? And then they decided everybody who'd ever trained was doing it wrong and they had to come back and retrain on everything. It's just called like, we're going to take your money again for the you know third time. Mm. And so I'm delivering perfection. They've done that now twice. They re-released the golden age of tech. You know why? Because everybody who trained with me left. There's only like three people left on post in the entire world from the original Golden Age of Tech launch, which had mm. uh, thousands of us, which went to every single org on the planet. There's literally like less than 20 left in the entire planet. That because we all left. We've all somehow left Scientology or staff. Like, broop, gone. Uh, explain that. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So it's like all these things don't make sense. And now we're in an even new more strict era where if you've seen the um not only do they sign the billionaire contract but they sign away all their civil rights in order to become a Sea Org member right they have to sign this waiver that says they can never uh, invoke their uh they're basically signing away um their constitutional rights they 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 acknowledge that they may never get paid it's a completely volunteer position like all this it's even crazier i'll have to find it for you i i know one of us yes, has the document please. i will get, i will it's send just, it to you it's <clears throat> insane so they are acknowledging that they're going into an, an indentured servitude yeah in exchange for you know helping all mankind right so it's in a lot gone, of this yeah. is generational right so it's coming totally. down so that and that's the totally. generational piece where i'm like totally. for the people and listen i don't try to force anybody into therapy a therapy no. doesn't work if it's forced right so for those that yeah. are saying well so and so needs therapy or so and so needs help yeah and can you actually force somebody to get it no. can you actually you can't <laughs> because otherwise you're back in scientology right you're back in this cult like mentality so well, nothing works if the person receiving it isn't like i want to do this this is going to work for me that's what you know everyone wants to bitch about narconon as a thing um mm -hmm. the drug rehab 
program. Now, there have been some people who graduated Narconon that were like, hey, I've never done drugs since. I swear by Narconon. My cousin yeah. is one of them. He swears that it saved his life. But that's because he went into Narconon with the full intention of getting off drugs and staying off them. Any program you enter with those two intentions in your brain, you're going to get off drugs and stay off alcohol. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's the key. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. I want to bring back, I want to go to this part right here. Oh, yes. Fun part. Oh, this part was, so I was telling, I was at Michael's, I had my, my AirPods on and I kept here. I said, what, 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 what is this? And I know that we reviewed it over with, um, uh, Miriam and she explained it, but the way you explain, you would just explain something that I said, wait a minute. So the editing of this document, and this is mm -hmm. some of the documents that were part of the documents that came with. Mr. Rinder, right? Am I hearing that correctly? That the, this was one of the many, or or what? The so way here this he's document just was breaking presented. down literally the Scientology org board. That okay. graphic. So he's just explaining how the hierarchy mm -hmm. of the C organization works, and okay. why certain people wouldn't have certain information, and how the information filters down through the organization. Now, it, it wasn't inaccurate what he broke down in this video. I will say that. Okay. He just left off his wife from the graphic Why? every single time. Why? Because we always leave Claire out as if she wasn't at the party. Like, she's right under David Miscavige. That's where she should be. Right next to Marty Rathbun, who he also leaves off of the graphic. Like, and this is supposed to be I the don't educational understand. piece, right? This I don't understand wow. why we refuse to acknowledge. And it's again, this isn't about painting Claire Headley as a bad person. Okay, she was born into Scientology. She was born into the C organization. She got trained early on. She was you know, made to become an RTC rep. Right. This is not, um, you know, um, had she grown up just in England as a small child, I, I imagine she would have excelled in school and probably, you know, would have become a lawyer or a scientist or something because she's wicked smart. Mm -hmm. And in, in general, um, is, is a very nice person. This is not a, a, a like a, a a jab at her personality or her as a person. But to pretend that she's not up there, and I'm pointing at the screen like you or guys that she wasn't pointing, up there. Or that she wasn't up there for a number of years filtering this communication, having it on her lines, knowing these things, being a part of them, running some of these programs, writing them, not all of them, okay, but that she wasn't somehow in charge at some points is inaccurate. It's not correct. It doesn't mean that she committed every crime that's ever happened to every child in Scientology. Absolutely not. The same goes for Mike Rinder. Mm -hmm. However, both of them absolutely know about things that they could be doing more to be part of the solution for, right? And in this moment, Mike has chosen to not be part of the solution for Miriam. I cannot speak to that. I don't understand it. I don't know what Claire does or doesn't know about Miriam's situation. Could she be part of the solution for it? I don't know. But that's the difference. It's like if you have information or were privy to it, that could be part of the solution for these things, then do it even when it doesn't benefit you with a paycheck, okay? Because Mike gets paid to go testify at these trials. Claire gets paid to go testify at these trials as an expert mm -hmm. witness. Miriam was asking, as merely an ex-Scientologist, 
and somebody who had reached out to the Aftermath Foundation and someone who was a contributor who got no dollars for being on that Emmy-winning show. Hey, you guys showed something on the screen that I need for my case. Can I have that? And now we are here. And that's what I find appalling because I don't, uh, personally, having worked in the back scenes of that, I don't understand how something could have been put up on the screen that the show didn't receive. Do they still have it? That's a question mark. I don't know. I don't know what these production companies and the shows keep or they don't keep. That I wasn't privy to on like where they store stuff or not. But for for that simple request to turn into all of this is insanity to me. It's just like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Because if you can help somebody like Miriam who's been working for 12 years by herself to get this case as far as it's gone and all you need to do is be like, oh, shit, let me see if I can dig up this affidavit that your mom did. That's nuts. Um, let me see who I can contact mm-hmm. and, you know, see what we can do. I, I, I don't understand, you know, that why it had to turn so contentious for that. And it, 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 because Mike Rinder has so many skeletons that he's worried about, you know, and he wants to be like, oh, well, you didn't work with me. You don't know anything about me. Like, I know enough because I know the people that did work for you mm-hmm. in the Sea Org. And because I'm nice, they tell me things. Mm-hmm. You know, and like like I said before, like my twin, uh, the person I was partnered with on the rehabilitation partner uh, project force, she was posted at Int, and she was mm-hmm. a child. She was again one of these kids human trafficked around the world, um, in the C organization. And uh, yeah, I mean, like there's stuff that I know just because of that. You know, it, it's like it, people forget that like friends talk, <laughs> like mm-hmm. we would chat and like gossip about shit um in the quiet times you know even on the rpf uh so yeah there's there's things but also those things are irrelevant to the now times the only focus and i say it a million times is like yes i believe ultimately we're all on the same team hopefully to end uh scientology's 501c3 status And to not get kids in Scientology. And that was also where some of the contention came in. Because, as you know, Serge has been, um, Serge Del Mar has been, you know, talk about don't get any kids in Scientology. Don't get kids in Scientology. We got to get those kids out. And some people were like, well, that's not really our jam right now. That's not what we're focused on. And, um, you know. But they have no problem using you for a story. Thank you. Especially. If it's, you know, going to generate money, mm-hmm. um, because I go back and again, that's not my story to tell. Uh, Mike Brown told his mm-hmm. situation. Right. And I just felt like, wait a minute, meetings behind the scene. Yeah. Production companies, Hollywood, yada, yada, yada. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, the survivors are good for that time being of bringing that story. And that's to me, when you, when you pointed that out about rewriting, people are trying to rewrite history. And Mm -hmm. and maybe that is where the divide of the community is at, right? Where it's like, you have these people that are up on, they were up on that executive level. Right. To come down to a foundation where they're still up on a certain executive level. Now get you, maybe it's not a paid position. I'm not really sure. I don't really know the ins and outs of it. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine that that would still seem kind of like off and weird for anybody uh, on this end. Yeah. And that's this is where it gets into the sticky wicket of especially when you're first coming out. Who can you trust? Mm -hmm. Who can you talk to? Who is a reliable source of anything? Absolutely. Um, And that's something you have to go through you know, over the years. I mean, like the first time I Googled Scientology, um, you know, it was like the middle of the night. I was pregnant uh, with my first kid. And I I literally thought, you know, James Richardson, who's still the security chief at Celebrity Center, was going to like storm my house, like Kool-Aid man style and take me down, you know. And 
that didn't happen. Um, Operation Clam Bake came up. Um, you know, uh, RIP to Andreas, who was running that for years. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I just thought, uh, you know, my first reaction to that website was like, what is this? What? And like, I was mad. And of course, they're talking about Xenu. And I was like, at first I was like, who's Xenu? What? You know, and I was like confused. <laughs> you know, I just thought the whole thing was like, well, you know, just so ridiculous, you know. Um, I mean, I am Greek, so I was like, it's a Xeno, a Xeno toast family, you know, like, what are we talking about? And so, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and I just was like, I, you know, everything I found out made me furious. Like, I, I think my blood pressure was like at 300 for like a full year. Um, mm. It just, um, <laughs> everything, I, I, I was so mad. I was just mm -hmm. mad that everything was a lie and I couldn't believe a lot of it. I couldn't talk to my mom about it because she was still like, you know, doing stuff. I wasn't talking to um, the man I was married to at the time because like mm -hmm. I didn't want him to leave me, you know. And so it was like I was doing all this stuff in secret and I was just like pissed, you know. Yeah. Um, and then we finally mm -hmm. started talking about it and we got each other out and we started like sharing <laughs> information and doing research <laughs> and, you know, reading things and doing stuff. And then, you know, I got on Tony's blog and that place was just like a mess too, because the comments section was just like a whole like vapid, just insane asylum of people who mm -hmm. just wanted to like, you know, be heard. And then they would just go off topic on like weird stuff. And I was like, what is this place? And they just can't stay on the article of the thing. And then I would get mad at him because I didn't think his stuff was accurate. And we got in a lot of fights about the stuff that he was reporting on. And, you know, I've said what I've said about Tony Ortega. I still don't trust him as far as I can throw him. And I think he has been somebody that people get referred to right away. Like, oh, you should go tell your story to Tony Ortega, you know, because he's a trusted reporter. Like, that man would have no job the day Scientology shuts its doors. Okay? That's just facts. Like, you know. And uh, he has screwed over more uh, ex-Scientologists than I can even count. And he just uses wow. people up until they're no longer useful to him. And he treats you, I, you know, I've got all the screenshots. He talks to you like a total piece of shit um, oh, in private. I'm sorry. He's awful. He's an awful human being. So I don't. I mean, I'm still you know, like, even, you know, even Nora, when you talk about. Um, but I get the same criticism for talking about Tony Ortega that I do for talking about Mike Rinder. Well, he's done oh, so gotcha. much good. He's helped so many people. He's been the only one doing this for you. I'm like, I'm sorry. No. What about Jesse Prince? What about Hannah? What about Spanky? These people mm -hmm. were all talking about Scientology long before Tony Ortega saw a cash bag on victim stories. Like, yeah. this is all, you know, and, and that's what people are accusing you of. Like, oh, you're going to make money off victim stories. And the TikTokers that are now YouTubers, they're just making money off victim stories. Like, these guys are out there because maybe at first it was like a gag. Like, oh, I'll just go stand in front of the stupid test center. Like, boop, boop, like, look at my viewers. They're loving it. And now they got fucked with by Scientology. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Y'all fucked with the wrong one. <laughs> and now I'm here to stay. Like, and, and that's what happens is Scientology just ignored again, if they had just ignored the TikTokers or like embraced them and came out and did like a little TikTok dance or some shit and just went viral and let them go. They would have literally been like, all right, these guys are cool. And they would have walked down the street and did something right. else. They right. would have literally gone on with their lives, but they can never just like be part of what is what. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is why they lose every time, but they will darvo their way into winning it. I promise you at the, at the March 13th event, we'll have people, the, people get into those events and they're like secretly record it, but they will, you know, show us how they will talk about how they've shattered suppression all up and down Hollywood Boulevard and like all this stuff. Yeah. They'll turn it into a win somehow for them and people <laughs> okay. will clap <clears throat> and it'll be a big parade and all right. Oh yeah. All right. Question. So when, when people say, I'm going to bring up another term, okay. drama, drama. Oh, and I know, listen, I know you just about, I saw that. I said, Lord, well, let me just say for the record, as somebody who has some master's in social work from an institute, like an actual state college. Like a real school? Um, 
like a real school, and then also got a bachelor's degree from a private Catholic real university um, in the field. I have never heard a professional in the helping field say the words trauma, drama in reference to a victim that's telling her story. I'm, that's Thank as you. much as I'll give you. There you go. I've never, I, never. To me, I'm sorry. Like, again, maybe I just have the most beefs with exes and I'm the problem. Just like mm -hmm. I should just play that, you know, that that lick from Taylor Swift songs. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's probably true. Um, that's what they said when I was in the Sea Org. And that's what they continue to say now. And that's fine. Um, and we are talking about Mr. Shelton. Um, and, and that's fine. It, the, the thing with Chris and it, it, it's the, it, and this circles back to the same problem with Mike and Mitch and Amy and Mark and Claire. It is a problem of now in Scientology, you say someone has a button on self-importance, right? Um, and that means that they care more about being important being viewed as important than actually what they are doing to be recognized for that. Mm. Right. Mm. So their ego is, is real big, but they haven't earned um, that gravitas because they're not like, you know, they're, they're, they're cash and checks that their mouth shouldn't be writing basically, you know, and, Chris worked at a lower level management organization known as the flag organization liaison office. It's an administrative organization. No mm -hmm. one cares about it. I'm going to be honest. People walk by it. They don't even know it's a thing. Um, it's so unknown that even most Sierra members are like, Oh, it's the FOLO, whatever. Like they don't, they don't care. They just did like administrative stuff. They ran org stuff. Um, you know, he did missions, so he would get to wear like the chain and he would go into orgs and like judge them up and tell them what to do and, a, bruh, 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 you know, and, um, you know, he got to feel important all the time because he would go in and like do stuff. And for a long time, as Chris has admitted, he was very much a Scientologist. Even mm -hmm. when he got kicked out, he was still a Scientologist because he was madly oh, wow. in love with a woman and they declared him an SP. Um, and he was like, well, I'll do the steps to get back because I am in love with her. And he was almost done with those steps. They're called A to E. And there's yeah. e A, B, C, D, E. And once you're done, you can then petition to be a Scientologist again. And he was like on D or something. And the woman wrote to him and was like, even if you do all the steps, I don't ever want to talk to you again. And that's when he was like, okay, well, I'm going to bring the thunder. <laughs> and he wrote his book. And he started his YouTube channel and he started speaking out. And, um, you know, then he decided to, like, throw Scientology in the trash. But yeah. up until that point, you know, he was, like, he was ready to go back to Scientology. If you watch his content, there's nothing that's changed. He talks about it learnedly. Um, he will explain to you concepts from it. But when people ask questions like, you know, is L. Ron Hubbard a cult leader or a con man, he'll skirt the issue. He won't just come out and say, L. Ron Hubbard was a con man. He was a megalomaniac, you know, a drug-addled, convicted felon con man mm -hmm. who was part of a, you know, sex magic cult who ran a super long con abandoned his wives and his children, threw some of them into the cult for, you know, slave labor, and then, you know, uh, tricked us all with his science fiction writing and uh, conned everybody out of money and then died high on visceral. Okay, so like, that's the facts. Let me let me be a little bit, um, play the devil's advocate a little bit because I, sure. I don't know the guy too well. I don't watch his stuff. I just remember I was I was triggered by your post. And then I heard some stuff and I said, OK, well, is it possible that this is how he's dealing with his trauma, too, by writing a book and then giving himself some level of self-importance right. in terms of like this is what this is by mm -hmm. 
in mm-hmm. my opinion, you're looking down on the people that aren't, you know, uh, that are still trying to make way or or make sense of whatever trauma they've been through, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not trying to excuse this behavior because I don't know the guy, right. uh, but that that re- I mean, it rubbed me the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, he got this degree from some online school that gave him two years of credit for his, you know, work in the anti-cult mm-hmm. uh, arena, right? All the stuff okay. that he'd been doing, um, speaking out and everything else. So he got credits for essentially this, the YouTubes yeah. and doing all this stuff. Now, what? Like, that's not a degree. This, listen. I consider myself to be pretty smart. Um, I'm good at the talking. I'm pretty yeah. funny. All the things. However, I do not, and I would not accept college credits for just you know uh, chit chat. Okay, <laughs> I I couldn't do that, and I worked in and government. He's calling this work advocacy work, which yeah, okay, I'm advocating for people to get out of Scientology and mm-hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. But like you know, like it 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 so skirts a line for me. It skirts a yeah. line for me, guys, because like yes, I could we could put all kinds of adjectives on there, but then once he got this degree, he puts those little letters after his name. Now he's an expert on psychology. Like, you're not. You're not an expert on psychology. And now he said a couple times, and correct me if I'm wrong, that mm-hmm. he's, like, treated some people. And they've said, it. you know, his comeback to me is, well, the people that I've treated have said I've helped them. Like, isn't that like what Elrond said? Like, I'm sorry. Isn't that like what every cult leader says? The people at Planet Fitness also say our our machines are awesome. Like, come in here. Our trainers are great. I mean, like, so what? So you sat in front of another person and they told you, uh, you know, something happened when they were a baby. And then you, like, said something. And then they were like, I feel relief, you know, for having said that for the first time. That's mm-hmm. normal. That's not magic psychology that you practiced. That's dangerous. It's all very dangerous. I mean, like, I it, 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 trust me, I've had some bad therapists. I've had people fall asleep on me while I'm trying to tell them about fucking, you know, shit happened to me in Scientology. They're like, I can't be bothered. I was like, no, really? Like, you know, it, but it is, it, it, it's, it's dangerous. super dangerous when you're, when it's you're dangerous. actually diving into people's trauma, which is what we're doing in Scientology with yeah. the, like, quote unquote, like, you know, if you look at it from an actual therapy thing, like regressing people into these memories until you get to like past lives and stuff. I don't even know what you're doing. It's just imagination or whatever. That's dangerous though, too. Um, when you're doing yeah. that, um, you are activating portions of a person's brain that you are not in control of. You're nope. not, you're not in the driver's seat. That person's not in the driver's seat. That person's gonna get lost in the weeds. And you're not yeah. really you you have this, you know, path <laughs> that you're following, but it's like, give me a break. I mean, this is we're lucky. Honestly, yeah, that more people don't end up in in asylums having done Scientology. Well, in like honest. I said, it's no, you're right. It, it's dangerous. Um, I wouldn't do it because I just I wouldn't. You know, yeah. I, I could talk to people and stuff, but um, I wouldn't be providing any kind of treatment or say that I'm an ex. I'm not an expert in psychology. Hell. I have a master's and I'm not even an expert in that field quite yet. Like, you know what I'm saying? You just, you have to be very mindful of what that is. And I mean, you know, like I said, maybe he, it's, it's a self. But it's, what it's I that find, rank. It's that rating. Mm-hmm. It's the self-importance. Yes. It's the, I am the expert. Like his book is like from A to Zenu. Now that's it. No other books need to be written. I've covered it all. Like literally he said that in a conversation. I've covered everything. Cause I said to him once when we were at the conference, like, Oh, I was thinking about writing a book, you know, about my experiences and stuff. He's like, well, you know, I already wrote everything. I wrote all the stuff. So you wrote about, about uh, my experience about, sci- <laughs> about Scientology. Mm-hmm. Like, and I was like, Oh, you know, he's like, well, I don't think anything else needs to come out, you know, you know, because you know, my book covers everything. And I was well. like, 
Oh, dangerous. So I've like never, I mean, I took that so seriously at the time. I was like, oh, well, maybe nobody wants to read about my story. So I'll just. That's sad. No. Right. Like I just, cause he was so like, you know, like not, you know, and it's just like, but again, it's like you get these when you're in, there are people that have authoritative roles and you're not. Mm -hmm in the authoritative role. So they were higher than you. Right. So you still have that programmed into your mind. Right. 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 Like Mike Rinder was the head of OSA. So it's like, no matter what I do, he's still, there's a piece of my mind that will always see that. That's why Aaron and Serge and I are like, cool. Because when we met, we were all kids. We were all like samesies. Yeah. We just yes. like at this same level. We were just homies. It, besties right mm -hmm. um you know and and other people that i you know meet after and stuff like um you know that i knew in different portions of my life we are close in different ways for different reasons okay but it's like when you when you're around somebody like that who's still also personifying that right as opposed to someone like spanky taylor Right, who was a high-ranking executive in the president's office at Celebrity Center because she was dealing um, with all celebrities. But then at one point, she was like John Travolta's like personal person. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, she has never, in any conversation that I've had with her, made me feel like, well, we'll just see. I I sit here, you know, and you you may join me. You know, like, it's just not that vibe. Not even Leah's ever you. made me feel like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, Leah's yeah, just yeah. like, let's go. Let's sit in my kitchen and, like, let's have a meal. You know, it's just, like, it's not ever been that. And some people you... want to still maintain that. Okay. So do you think that someone, like, his personality, or, or others, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I have felt that this has been the issue, too, that I've noticed. It's, like, YouTube or having a it's like the ability to reinvent yourself again right oh, sure. so if what you were in this time frame a decade ago was this come to youtube or other social media platforms it is a new era it's a different generation right, right? so and i find that not just this everybody that there is a people try to reinvent themselves Again, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's an opportunity. Even though, I, like I said, I'm not making excuses for the guy because I don't know him. I'm a, I'm already side eyeing the fact when he said trauma dump, and then I heard that where he got his degrees were not a certified institution or anything. Then I I'm like, listen, nobody should problem. ever say that's trauma dangerous. drama. Whether you're a, no. a psychologist, a pretend no. psychologist, whatever. Trauma drama is not a word, guys. That's not. A if word. hear me in the chat, hear me loud. If your psychiatrist, psycho certified or not, anybody therapist no. tells you that you are trauma, drama, whatever, run, run for the hills, take your insurance <laughs> card, your Medicaid, your whatever AARP card, and just get the hell out of there. Yeah, because they're going to do you more damage than good. Oh That's my God, what I yes. gotta say. No. Nora, let's read some super chats because yes, I <laughs> we are behind. Vintage Mama says, "Hot dog, Nora, love it." <laughs> Yo, is that your merch? Um, I gotta, I gotta get, I, I'm working on getting it actually out, but yeah, the, uh, get... oh, hot dog. Yeah. Listen, I'm telling, I'm going to get a rabbit with the bullseye <laughs> and it's going to say dead agent and be like, what the, hell? like, I, I have, I have a list of merch that I need to do. <laughs> right. I don't know. I yeah. just think it's funny. Like you put that a rabbit hilarious. or who was the, the Bugs Bunny guy that would, is it Yosemite Sam? Yosemite Sam, right? He would, right. he would hunt the rabbit. There you go. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. James says, I escaped an attempt, an attempted mm. essay by a male nurse. And you're correct, Nora. My thoughts process changed drastically during and after that experience. Love you. Mm. And Hummingbird says, uh, oh, look at the heart one up there. I didn't know it did that. Ooh, do you, do you have a Mac? It'll do it on I Mac. do, but I see Mac it's, failed. You me. have to hold you have to hold it long enough. You have to hold it long enough. Look it. Do, 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 do. No. All don't, right, whatever. Shake it around. <laughs> it's done the thumbs up before. Maybe it'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Anne says, I'm a victim of essay. My attacker was an LAPD detective. Mm. Oh, gosh. 
I'm so sorry, Ann. Position and power is, yeah. you know, people that, and that's every organization that whether it's the LAPD, Scientology, the Catholic Church, it can happen yeah. just about anywhere. Destiny says, do you think that you can ever, cons ever construct authentically, if ever construct authentically, if you were one of the leaders of the cult? Deconstruct authentically. Deconstruct. I'm sorry. Um, Why did I read that wrong? That, you know, that's a good question, Destiny. Um, I think that would take an extraordinary amount of effort, but again, therapy, 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 mm -hmm. therapy, and also, uh, you know, and this is like what I tell my kids, you can't just do therapy or you can't just take medication or even like, you know, it got controversial in my chat where I brought up the, the, the other new therapies that Mike Brown was talking about that they're introducing for the military and things like that. Why um, was that controversial? I because mean, because some people were like, that's not, that's not approved. It's not this. It's not, everybody has opinions always about, mm -hmm. you know, all, all different therapies and people have opinions about therapy in general. I mean, and listen, as somebody who's, you know, a recovering Scientologist, I would tell you, it took me 14 years to be able mm -hmm. to walk into a therapist's office and I had a full blown panic attack when I, when I walked yeah. in there and the guy looked like Santa Claus. So it, it's very hard. And he just did my intake, you know, and he apologized to me. He got me with a really nice female therapist who walked mm -hmm. me through talking about Scientology and then coming out of the closet. So, you know, I, you know, it was, it was great. It was a great matchup. Um, Shout out to Santa Claus. Shout out to Santa for, you know, <laughs> get me the right matchup, you know, but it's Aww. like, it, it really is. Once you find a good therapist that you can really talk to and connect with and have the conversations that you need to have, um, it's important because I hadn't been in therapy in a couple of years and I just got a new therapist now. And I started talking about something that I hadn't really talked like ever. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's got me like a little twisted. I'll be honest. Like, yeah, yeah. When you, when you really open up something and you crack something you haven't cracked, it will fuck your shit up. And it's hard. It's hard yes. work to do therapy. Yes. So for that question, like somebody who's a cult leader trying to deconstruct all of that stuff and de deprogramming and everything else, that's going to take, first of all, a super high level therapist and psychiatrist. Absolutely. That's a psychiatrist level situation. And also it, it's going to take a multi step, many steps, many years. This is not, yeah. you know, zapping zap, one and done. done. Yeah. And there are zapping zap therapies that are not lobotomies and other things like Scientologists think, you know, yes. there's the, the DT and whatever. I don't know all the initials, but yeah, <laughs> stuff that treats all kinds of stuff, but it's it, therapy now is amazing. There's so many yes. things. And then we're talking about, you know, uh, medicinal mushrooms and they're bringing LSD back as a therapy now. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many things that can that be can therapeutic do. when it's done with medical professionals in a controlled environment. I'm not talking yes. about getting some mushrooms from your friend and you're just hanging out in the garage. Okay. Like you gotta go to the clinic. <laughs> All right. Jojo says, as an army brat, I agree with Nora. Term stolen valor. Respect is for those who served our country, not uh, Church of Scientology uh, pretenders. 100%. 100%. Grandma Sherry says, love this collab from the Fluffle. Aww. Aww. Shout out to Grandma Look Sherry. At that. <laughs> I know. She's the best. Rabbit. She's a great supporter. She's so Hannah sweet. says, Leah calling him Mikey all the time seems to soften him in a weird way. She made him more likable. So sorry for what you went through, Nora. Yeah, I mean, they call, they have a nickname for each other. And that's fine. They're friends. You know, that's, you know. But yes, it that's probably was. A, yeah, that's what friends do. Destiny again. Says, if you want to keep a secret, you must also keep it from yourself. George Orwell. That's very true. That's very true. Miss Chivius, thank you for uh, gifting a member. Vanessa says, respectfully, he's not a PR marvel in the real world. <laughs> he singularly is a whole ass dumpster. Fear and name calling isn't real life. He is no one's friend, ally. Nora's been waiting for you to jump in the game. Full time rabbit, real one. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Vanessa. Uh, Anne says, sent one on Rabbit Channel. Oh, 
I wanted to be sure you got one for me too. Yes, essay from LAPD. It was why I didn't go down there to meet Aaron. Wow. Uh, too close for comfort. Oh my well, God. Well, if you, you want Anne. to try, and if you want to come and be safe, surrounded by lots of women who will just karate chop anybody who's getting near you, I promise you, I will go full mom. Uh, we're going to be down there uh, in uh, a week from Friday. You're going down there, right? I'm going down there a week from Friday. I'll be there. Oh my gosh. How exciting. Um, is Much it excited. airy? I know. Huh? I I wish I could go down there, but I can't. I can't you, you should. Know. Well, I'm going to be there. Liz Gale will be there. Liz oh Ferris will be there. Alicia from Degraded Daughters is going to be there. It's gonna I would be a love whole, to. It's going to be a whole girl party. We're just going to be like, we're bringing out there. The, Ooh. We're bringing the mom energy. We're just going to be like, oh my gosh. Know? All yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. That'd be yeah. great. What do you guys think? Should I go down there? Yes. <laughs> Yes. I don't I don't even have the equipment. I, I don't think I can. There, you just need your phone. What do you mean equipment? Bring your phone. I don't know, man. I feel like I need like a whole ninja suit and everything to go down there. You know what I'm saying? What does it say? Clarifying Nora's statement about Mike Rinder and Mike Brown eating lunch at David Miscavige's table is literal, not a high school not metaphor. A high school yes. Medical. Oh, Mitch Brisker. Also, I'd like to communicate about PDX demos. Um, hi, Kazri. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Mike Rinder occasionally ate with David Miscavige only when he was at the end base because he was okay. actually located in Hollywood at the Hollywood Guarantee Building. That's where Mike's office was, um, which is where the life exhibition is, uh, which is one of the buildings they go to protest at. But Mitch Brisker has said many times that he was like, you know, literally at the lunch table with David Miscavige and in the same lunchroom with him and stuff at the gold base, because that's where his job was, was to shoot the films and things like that um, for Scientology and also to mm. shoot promos. He also went around the world, you know, doing that. He shot various and directed various things um, for the church. It wasn't just the, you know, um, things. So he, yeah, he did a lot of stuff. What do you think of this question? Do you think auditing produced, um, Imagined incidents? Yes. A hundred percent. Because wow. you have to keep coming up with stuff. You have to keep coming up with stuff. Gotcha. So you just have to kind of keep going until the little. Yeah, you keep going earlier and earlier and earlier. Past life, past life, past life, past life, past life. You know, you're, you're at some point, everybody is an intergalactic overlord. I can't tell you how many people as a supervisor who would walk through and be supervising and listening to people's other people's sessions, how many people were all, you know, famous people. And I, my mom was an auditor. She's like, I had three different pre-clears who were all Marilyn Monroe. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, at some point, and I was like, mom, that didn't clue you in. That's all a bunch of hullabaloo. Like, how could three people be Marilyn Monroe? Why is everybody Cleopatra? Like, that doesn't That's make no crazy. sense. Yeah. That, is, so I would, oof, okay. Let me, <laughs> I have to think about what I want to say about that, but not right now. Jennifer says, it's obvious that MR's blog post was DA PAC. Would he recognize that? I, district Attorney PAC? Or what is, what's DA No, the de dead agent. The dead, dead agent PAC. See, mm -hmm. I, District Attorney, <laughs> dead agent. <laughs> Thank you. That's because you live in the real world. You live I in the live real in true world. crime. What <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> dun, dun. I'm thinking district. I'm thinking right. Law and order. <laughs> um, would he recognize that? Would the AF board members? How much of his conscious and how much is programming? It's all programming. Um, Maybe both. But I think I think absolutely he made it as a DA pack because that's how you handle somebody like me somebody like rabbit, somebody who is a problem that agent them. Well, how that's did, the easiest thing to do. The, the journalist, the one before where mm -hmm. Mike decides to apologize at the aftermath show mm -hmm. where he's like, well, I even think I attacked you and they're confronting. And I'm like, huh? You so think wonder, you did? Should we roll the did. tape, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> feel like every time I'm watching I like The it. Bachelor or any of these reality shows and they're like, one girl will be like, you know what? She told me blah, 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 blah. And the guy will be like, oh my God, I don't can't believe so-and-so is starting drama. Would somebody please just go like, can I see the tape? That only mm -hmm. happened once on Selling Sunset when the little baby head guy's girlfriend was trying to start some drama and Darvo 
uh, Chriselle right to her face. And she was like, you know, this is being recorded, right? Like it's being, re we're being taped. This is right. That's like crazy. you're just changing everything. That's yeah, the only time I've ever person. seen somebody on reality TV acknowledge that like everything is, can we just, can, can you hand her a monitor? Can you just play that back? Like, that's what I would, that I could never be on reality television. I'd be like, no, this is, come on. That's too much. Anne says, join them in LA, Rabbit, and join the SPTV cruise. I heard about the cruise in September. Yep. It's going to be fun. Love you too, strong, wonderful, or strong, smart ladies. Thank you. I'll have to think about it, y'all. I mean, I have a baby bunny. Baby bunny is like, mm -hmm. her birthday's coming up, so I got to deal with that too. That's another oh, thing. Oh my goodness. She's getting big. Um, I mean, I'm literally flying in Friday. I'll be there Saturday. I'm flying home Sunday because like oh, that's- Oh, so you're just like going to be quick. Shaboom. Yeah, wow. I'm in and out. I'm in and out because like I, you know, I got four kids, so I can't, you, you know, I got to be ready to get back here to my wife and my four kids. And, you know, so we're going to, we're going to uh, protest hard on Saturday. It's going to be like protesting yes. and then fly home. <laughs> Did you see Kelly Copter's short? Today's? No, well, no. Was there a different one? Because it, I don't know. It was yesterday. Oh, you, you, okay. Um, I have to I'm, go somebody watch, asked right? it. Hey, I'm going to play it. Please play Kelly. Co and this is going to be the last thing I play because I got to head out. Okay. Uh, Helicopter short. Uh, shout out to Kelly Copter. We're going to drop her, her channel in the, uh, okay. in the link or excuse me, in the chat. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is like great. But you got, I, I, have you seen this at all? Let me see. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've seen this one. I'm on here to put my two cents in. A flea or dog unknown. Who cares what I say cause I'm a second gen. What the fuck was this blog post? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> she makes me want to drop a beat like when she, she did cracks this. me up so much i love this girl oh, oh y'all mm. can see the forest for trees that is so true you can't date me i love it i love it This dog with fleas. You can't dead agent me. You go, this girl. dog with fleas. I love her I so love much. Her. Go subscribe to her. I dropped her link in the chat. You guys go subscribe. Oh, go do it. Somebody said Nora I'm a member of Bachelor Nation. I am. I have also watched all of Love is Blind and everything associated with that. I love reality TV. I have to, I have to have something, guys, to just like you know decompress. Soothe. Soothe, soothe the mind. Also, my wife and I sit next to each other, just holding each other, going like, "I love you so much." Like, oh, our relationship how is cute. amazing! I love Aww. you. <laughs> I love that. Well, um, Nora, I have to let you go because I got to go hey. tend to the children of the corn over there. I feel you. Um, I hope we can do this again. This was Absolutely. awesome, and I appreciate you kind of talking yeah. on the situation. You know what I'm saying? Always. Anything else? Is there anything else you want to say before we head out? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm missing something. No, I mean, listen, we could talk for like three hours about all this. Yes, stuff. we can. The, ba the basic thing is this. Let's just keep this in mind. All of this stuff is about accountability. Yes. It is about making people tell the necessary truths to assist those of us that are here now and that will yeah. be coming in getting the justice for what has happened to them for okay? generations and those, right and those necessary truths guys are hard they suck they are dirty they are not fun and it's time to stop pretending that you don't know those necessary truths absolutely and our, all of our eyes are on the prize of getting Scientology's 501c3 status revoked 
and yeah. no more kids in Scientology. And that's it. It's not about if someone's a good person or a bad person or I don't like someone or so and so can't sit at my table. Who cares about all that? It's literally if you know something that can be of assistance to help someone heal, to help someone get the justice that they need, then you need to pony that up, even if it doesn't benefit you and you're not paid to do so. Stop rewriting history when it's all yes. like you can't erase the shit already. You just can't. No. Um, Nora, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You guys go sub up to Nora's channel and get her to 20 because that's the next step. 20,000 20, guys. Let's do it. Tomorrow. Birthday game. Tomorrow. All right. <laughs> I will see you on the next one, Nora. Bye. Talk Bye, you guys. guys. You guys have a great night. Bye, guys.